Hi, hello and welcome to a new tutorial, this time for Gravit Designer. So Gravit Designer is essentially an online version of Adobe Illustrator which we use in school. And what we're trying to do here is to introduce some of the key tools and basic skills for graphic design that we use in Adobe Illustrator, but in a format that you can easily access from home and can develop those key core skills before we get back into the classroom. So to start off, you're going to want to use a Chrome browser to go to designer.gravit.io. And when that opens, you'll be greeted with this splash screen asking you what sort of design you would like to be producing. Now you could set the width and height manually, but we're going to be working on print and we're going to choose the A4 paper size. So we just click on that and there we have our A4 piece of paper centrally in the page. So let's look at a few tools before we get started. First of all, you are going to want to know how to do a quick zoom. So here, 200% is more than enough to be able to see the page full width. And if you hit this button here, it will zoom back out to fit to fill. So it's 200% is where we're going to be working. And if you click on the hand tool here, you can click and drag down in order to move the piece of paper around on your screen so you can move about to the different areas. So next we're going to look at the pen tool. Now the pen tool is the main one we're going to be using today and we could use a freehand tool but it's a lot less accurate and the lines are going to be a lot less clean. So when we're drawing our vector images here we are going to have a fill and a stroke. So essentially the stroke is the outside line that you would draw with your pencil and then the fill is the colour that you would add on the inside using your coloured pencils or markers. Now if you click over here on the coloured circles that's how you select the different colour you're going to use whether that's for your fill or for your lines. But we'll come back to that later but if you accidentally do click on it all you need to do is press escape and that will get rid of that box so you don't need to worry about it. The thing you've got to remember about vector graphics, which is what we're drawing here in Gravit or in Illustrator, is that we're not drawing a line. What we're doing is telling the computer a series of points where we want it to draw lines in between. And that's important to remember because that's how we give it the instructions through our mouse input. We start off simply by clicking once. So you press the button down and let go, just a single click, and that sets our first point. Now we move over and you'll notice that as I'm moving my mouse around you can see that it is tracking my mouse pointer with where it is going to put the next point. And I simply move to where I want my next point and click once. And make sure I let go of the mouse button and it's cemented that line in place. And I can move around the rest of my object clicking once to add a corner point. And what we want to make sure we do with any vector graphic program is to make sure that we return back to the original point where we started and click on that original origin point in order to close the shape. That means that our shape is all one continuous piece. Now you'll notice if I click off to one side and I'll emphasize the gap here so I don't actually close the shape that it hasn't finished with the line tool. It thinks I want to keep going because it knows I haven't closed that shape. So I need to make sure I come all the way back to my original point and click right on it in order to close that shape. So what I can do now is come over to the fill tool, click on the little circle and then select a nice bright color so I can fill that shape. And that's essentially how we create a filled object. So let's have a quick go at doing that now. Let's draw another rectangle. So I click, let go, take my line over to where I want it to go, click once more to set my second corner click again for my third corner and click again to close my shape and there I have a completely closed and filled shape. Now the problem with the fill tool is sometimes when we're working in a vector graphics package we don't necessarily always want the fill to be on. Now this will make a lot more sense once we start doing some uh, graphic design in a little while but the reason that I like to leave the fill turned off is because sometimes when we're drawing our objects, if it preemptively fills for us, you'll notice that we don't actually have a stroke line, an outside line, and we might not notice that. So on this shape, you can see that we've got a nice firm and closed outside line, and that object can work as a whole object. If we don't close that object, we are going to have issues later on with colouring and layering our objects. So the next tool that we're going to look at here is the pointer tool. And the pointer tool is used to select 
objects and to move them around on the page. So quite simply, you can draw a box around the object that you want to move to select it and then click on it and move it anywhere you like on the page. I'm going to press delete and that gets rid of it completely. And we'll do exactly the same at the top. So now we want to select this square and we do that by making sure that we're on the pointer tool and we click anywhere on the object and that will give us the bounding box. So what I want to do now is to show you how we can adjust the borders. What we do is we come over to where you can see our border thickness and all we need to do is hover over that, click in order to engage the adjustment mode and then we can slide up and down just like a slider or a fader on a mixing desk. We can make that line thicker or thinner. So let's pause the video, open that browser window and get ourselves going with Gravit I.O. As the first task, what I'd like you to do is to follow on again with the start of this video and practice drawing a shape using the pen tool and making sure that you close that object and that you can try moving it around by selecting it with the pointer tool and adjusting the thickness of the stroke using that toolbar over on the right hand side. So drawing a box is all well and good, but that's not what these kinds of packages are designed to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use the pen tool, and you'll notice that when we zoom right in, which we can do by holding control and using the mouse wheel, you can see that when I hover over this vector line, I get a little plus sign, and that plus sign enables me to add an additional point in on that path that I've already created. And what that does is if I add a few points along here, you'll see that I can now adjust the shape after I've finished drawing it. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna to need to select a different type of pointer tool. And that is the sub select tool. By choosing the sub select tool, we can actually come over and grab hold of each of these little nodes or points and move them wherever we want to and that will stretch out the shape and allow us to create a much more complicated design out of a very, very basic starting shape. And so you can see what I'll do here is I will just quickly reshape some of these areas and create a much more intricate and interesting vector graphic. So next up is the shape tool. And what I'm gonna show you here is the uh, ellipse tool. That's just basically a circle tool. And I'm actually gonna fill this one and I'm gonna choose white as my color. And you'll probably guess straight away why. Now, once you've got one shape, the thing to remember is that just like PowerPoint, we have objects that are in front or behind each other. So grabbing my arrow tool, my pointer tool, I can then move that object round to where I want it. Then heading back over, select my ellipse tool again, select a fill color, this time I'm gonna go with black, and I'm gonna draw another shape on top of my white circle. I you can probably guess what it is now, but by going back onto my pointer tool, I can select the white circle, shift, and then click also onto the black circle. That selects both of those. Then I go up to the edit menu, I say edit copy, and then right click and say paste here. And I've got my second eye, which is slightly in the wrong place, but that's fine because I can move it. And you'll see you get some lovely guidelines to help you get it all lined up perfectly. Now, as I was just saying, it's a bit like PowerPoint because objects will sit in front and behind each other. So sometimes something might happen like this where one of your objects has disappeared. If you just move the object to the side using your pointer tool, you will notice that it's actually here underneath. And you just need to right click on it and go into arrange and bring that to the front. And then when you put your shape back, you'll see it's sat on the front again. So sometimes when you're working on your design, you might have a sudden panic and think that you have accidentally deleted an object when actually what's probably happened is that object has somehow ended up behind another object. So just remember in that right click menu that you have the ability to bring to the forward or push to the back. And so now it's your turn. Have a go at adding some additional points along your vector lines, modifying your shape, and adding some additional shapes on top to create an interesting image. And don't forget to screenshot it and put it into a PowerPoint so that you can hand this in at the end of the lesson to show me the amazing progress that you've made.